how to make butternut squash with blue cheese, parma ham and walnuts. So first of all, I'm going to prepare the squash. I find a lot of people don't quite know what to do with the squash. So um, I'm going to, first of all, I'm just going to cut off the stem end. The skin of a, a squash is, is actually feels very tough when it's raw, but when it's cooked, surprisingly, it becomes incredibly soft and in no time at all. So you never really need to peel a squash unless it's very, very thick, the skin. And the older they are, the thicker the skin is. Now, it's actually very hard to cut a squash in half. Um, so I'm going to just start with the sort of trunk end. And cut through there help to turn it over and just go through the other side and then through the bulb try and get it in half as much as you can so here we have the pips of seeds and the membrane. I'm just going to scoop those out into a little dish. Now the seeds, you can clean up, wash them under the tap in a sieve, put them in a sieve, rinse them, rinse off all these orangey bits and then you've got lovely pumpkin seeds to use in a salad. There we are, all scooped out. So I'm just now going to cut it in half again. If you have a larger squash than this, you might want to cut each half into three. I'm, this is a sort of normal size um, squash, so I'm just cut, going to cut them into half. You do need a sharp knife and you do need a chopping knife. I'm just going to grease an oven-proof dish, a little bit of oil, and then the squash. There. I now need some garlic. I've got, I've got a whole head of garlic that I'm going to use. I'm not going to peel it, so I'm just going to, I've taken off the outer papery layer under the heavy knife. I'm just going to bash them out a little bit to release the flavour and I'm just nestling them in the dish around the squash. Garlic cooked like this, roast garlic, perhaps wrapped up in a, a whole head of garlic, wrapped up in a little bit of tin foil and cooked until soft, as, as a delicious thing to spread on toast. You just squeeze, squeeze the garlic, the paste out of the cloves onto toast and it's delicious. So we'll just nestle those in there. And we need some sage. I've got some purple sage here out of the garden, but just the same as the green. Just more ornamental. So a few leaves of sage, which I'm just going to snip with my herb scissors. Sage and squash go beautifully together. Then some olive oil, just a little bit drizzled over the top, and some sea salt. Then I'm going to pop this in the oven, sort of 200 degrees, so quite a hot oven, for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, the length of time will depend on the squash. Um, it'll depend on how, how young it is, how fresh it is. Um, it'll get there in the end, but um, it just might take longer if it's an older squash. So here's the squash. It's 
had a, a, this took about an hour in the oven um, and as you see it's nice and soft when I pierce it with a knife. So now just to finish it off I'm going to add a little bit of blue cheese. This is gorgonzola. Quantities don't really matter. Just a little bit scattered here and there. Make sure there's a little bit goes in the cavity because then it nicely settles in there and makes a nice sauce. And now I'm just going to add a few walnuts. I've got walnut pieces here. As you can see, they're, they're sort of almost quarters or they're just little pieces. Walnuts, walnuts are very expensive to buy anyway, um, as all nuts are. But um, I, I would recommend buying walnut pieces because they're much cheaper than walnut halves. Um, and nine times out of ten, you would be chop, roughly chop a walnut anyway. I can hardly think of any time when I would use <coughs> walnut halves. So buy the pieces and it's much cheaper. Also, walnuts, like all nuts, they go rancid very quickly. So, um, or only uh, particularly walnuts, they, they, they go rancid almost overnight. So, only buy the amount you need. Or if you have um, extra, then um, freeze them. And all nuts, I freeze all nuts. Once I've, I've opened a packet of them, I freeze them. And then you can just pull them out of the freezer and use them from frozen. You don't need to thaw them out. So, now I'm just going to pop this back into the oven for a few minutes, probably four or five minutes, until the, the cheese is melted. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna put a little bit of double cream on, optional double cream. I nearly forgot. Some people like it, some people don't, but I think we'll put it on today. A Little bit of double cream, that's probably two tablespoons. Um, put it back into the oven and the gorgonzola will melt into the, into the cream and make a lovely sauce. So four or five minutes in the oven. So that's had about five minutes in the oven and as you can see the blue cheese is melted and it's sort of um, melded with the cream to make a nice sauce. This isn't meant to be a, a, have a sauce sauce but it's just nice with a bit of liquid. And I've got some lovely parma ham here so I'm just going to nicely interleave just a few slices. Just roughly tear it. This is optional. You could omit the parma ham. You could fry some mushrooms and add, have those on the top instead. This is very good for vegetarians if you use vegetarian cheese and obviously omit the ham but probably use mushrooms. So here we have lovely, lovely autumnal uh, recipe, butternut squash, blue cheese, walnuts and parma ham. And I think the only thing that is needed with that is probably some nice crusty bread to mop up the juices and a nice crisp green salad. Mm.